Standing here with Kevin Mack of Shape Space VR uh, and Blortasia. Yes. And Kevin is, you are quite the guy. Um, a plethora of experience and, and background that's all coming together into this one very cool thing. Can you tell us about Blortasia and where it stemmed from? Yes, well, um, Blortasia is my virtual reality art experience. And it's, uh, it's designed as an entertaining art world that you fly around in. It's like a big um, sculpture installation in the mm. sky. There's over 1,700 sculptures that are all animated and alive. And you just, you can fly through it um, easily and intuitively. And, and it's all uh, animated and moving and it never repeats. So it's always different and evolving. It's different for each person. And because it's completely abstract and I'm using a number of uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, perceptual principles yeah. to uh, alter consciousness. So it's uh, inducing a flow state, much like you would experience in scuba diving or hang gliding wow. or surfing and that kind of thing. And uh, it's, it's, it's a mindfulness experience. It, it, it completely induces a state of presence wow. and engages your own imagination and, uh, and awe. I feel like that's something everyone kind of needs. What, yeah. what types of effects would someone experience internally from that? You were talking a little bit before about anti-inflammation. Anti yeah. And yeah, well the flow state, um, uh, if, it's a, if it's a deep enough flow state, yeah. if it's a profound enough, it can uh, activate the parasympathetic nervous system. And, and w when that happens, um, you know, you're releasing um, anti-inflammatories uh, and you're uh, boosting the immune system. There's all kinds of uh, chemical, physical processes that are happening in your body that are really good for you, sure. as well as psychologically. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's reducing your cortisol levels and, and so on. And, and it just, it's a, it's a really good thing for your, for your mind and your body. Oh, it seems like it. And where did all of your knowledge about this come from? Um, can you speak a little bit about your background? and? Yes, well, I, I've, I've been an artist all my life. My parents were artists. I, I grew up in the film industry, making art for the film industry. And, uh, but I've always had an interest in science and physics and light. Even, you know, most artists have an interest in, in basic physics. You want you know, perspective and light and shadow sure. and all of that. Sure. Uh, and for me, it just continued and expanded. I got into computer graphics very early uh, in, the, in the 80s. And so, I became fascinated with the idea of making art with computers and I've been doing that for 30 years now and so I think the neuroscience thing came about when I got into, I helped introduce computer graphics to the visual effects industry and I saw the potential in uh, using neural networks and artificial intelligence and artificial life uh, to uh, make the creation of visual effects, computer graphics visual effects, more efficient. And so I started studying computational neural networks and I, I got into artificial life and, and I really, uh, then that led me to biological neural networks and then sort of coincidentally I got this job doing the opening titles for Fight Club uh, as well as other visual effects, sure. but uh, the opening titles is a, a you know a 95 second pullback through the human brain, and it was the most uh, realistic and accurate uh, visualization of the brain done to date. Wow. And so I presented that at a uh, the uh, inauguration of the International Brain Mapping Project uh, back in 1999, wow. I think, and. Uh, I had the top 200 neuroscientists in the world as a captive audience and I presented the work on I did on Fight Club but I had come up with some of my own theories about neural topology and development and so I presented them to all these people and they were well received and I, I've been involved with the neuroscience community uh, since then. So That is really spectacular. And then in what way did your approach when um, on Fight Club Mm -hmm. and the way you approach that scene. How has your technique or methodology, the way you approached it, evolved to this project? Well, it's, it's actually, it's many of the same processes oh, cool. and of course they've evolved and become more complex sure. and I've integrated more and more processes. A yeah. big part of what I'm doing is hybridizing different processes to achieve new effects, new oh, things cool. that we, we, you couldn't achieve with any one process. Yeah. So I'm using proceduralism and rule-based systems and all, all manner of, uh, of uh, generative and uh, handmade elements 
uh, and functions to, to create my work. I think um, uh, one of the cool things about Fight Club uh, was that the brain wasn't modeled by, by artists. Mm. It was grown. And so I used a rule-based system known as L-Systems uh, to actually grow the brain. Uh, so all the neurons were generated as, uh, as, as part of a system. And I'd, I'd, I'd done this because I'd done it the year before. I won an Oscar for my work on uh, What Dreams May Come, where I grew a, a tree. And so it's, uh, I'm still using rule-based systems, and, and uh, the, my sculptures are, are actually alive. Wow. Uh, in a very, very, very simple level, and wow. I'm now what I'm working on is getting them to be um, more alive and more um, to get more complex behavior from them, and have them so that they can actually interact with you and and respond to you, and and actually have them have the intention and the capability to heal you through direct neural manipulation. Where could they access this? right now if anywhere it's available on steam That's for the awesome. HTC Vive yes I and, love it and my other experience uh, Zen Parade okay. uh, induces a, a mindful state a meditative state and that's available uh, for the Gear VR on the Oculus Store. That's great news. I'm glad that this is something that people can actually get to and, yeah, and experience. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting quite a few users. And w what's really cool is that um, uh, whereas most uh, experiences, entertainment experiences, VR uh, experiences and so on, are, uh, you know, they have a, a, a linear fixed duration and yeah. uh, you know, a lot of story-based things. Right. Uh, you know, you, you go through that once you've done it, you've done it. And right. it's, it's, you're done with it. Yeah. Um, whereas uh, my work isn't based around any story, there's no game. Okay. Uh, it's sort of like going to the beach. You, yeah. you don't, when you go to the beach and go, well, I've been to the beach, I don't need to go again. You, you go again and yeah. again because yeah. it's always a little different yeah. and it's always an enjoyable experience. And it sounds like this has an effect on you that can last afterwards and it to does. come rather than just in that moment. Yeah, we're, we're doing studies now to, to determine what, uh, you know, how long the effects last and, and so on, but it does seem to have lasting effects. Uh, and people tell us they, they're, uh, they feel it and are aware of the effects of it lasting for week, even weeks later. Very cool. I have to try. You all, all right. should try too. This sounds really incredible. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you.